What's up, Cereal Heads? Today we're going to talk about SW Graham Cereal from Kellogg's. And before a bunch of people from the UK head into the comments section to correct my pronunciation of the word Graham, sorry, you just have to get used to it. In the US, we basically pronounce this word as Graham, G-R-A-M. I've already had people give me a hard time for not pronouncing it with kind of like two syllables, Graham, Graham, Graham. I don't know, sorry, it's Graham. That's just the way it is. Deal with it. All right, anyway, so Kellogg's released this cereal back in 1989. In fact, if you look closely at this box, you can see it apparently belonged to someone named Matt Pleasant, and it was bought on June 6, 1989. At least that's what was inscribed on it when I bought it from eBay. So thanks, Matt, for not opening this box all those years ago. Now, aside from this creepy boy on the cover, you can see from the box that this cereal was just shredded wheat biscuits. Now, what's the difference between wheat flour and graham flour? Well, it's a little complicated. Basically, graham flour, which was invented by Sylvester Graham, who we'll get to in a minute, is basically just a version of whole grain wheat flour, meaning it uses the bran, the germ, and the endosperm of the wheat. The endosperm is ground finely, whereas the bran and the germ are ground coarsely, and when they're all mixed together, overall, graham flour is a bit more coarse than traditional whole grain wheat flour. Now, when people think of graham flavor, they usually think of graham crackers. Those are usually sweetened with sugar or honey, and of course, are the preferred cracker slash cookie for making s'mores. But that's enough of that, let's get back to the cereal. Take a look at the side of the box here. It says introducing the first shredded graham biscuit. And it shows the actual size of the cereal here on the side. Then as we flip it over on the back of the box, they tell you about the inventor of graham flour, the Reverend Sylvester Graham. They explain how in the early 1800s, Graham led some health movement and promoted Graham for the American diet and Sorry, I fell asleep while reading the back of this box. But yeah, clearly this stuff wasn't really for kids because there's no games on the back. In fact, you can pretty much tell who their market was with this little part right here where they talk about remembering those graham crackers our mothers gave us. This stuff was leaning hard on nostalgia and the good old days of yore. And if you don't believe me, check out this commercial. It wasn't much to look at, but the old school housed what became my richest memories. I remember Mrs. Williams passing out graham crackers and milk as a reward for some good deed. She always found a deed for each child. Now Kellogg's has found a way to capture the wholesome good taste of graham crackers. New SW Graham, the genuine Graham cereal shredded into biscuits. Kellogg's SW Graham, original in cinnamon. It takes you back to the goodness of Graham. You never forget the good things. Doesn't get much more sappy than that. Let's bring back the good old days when America used to be great. <sighs> Okay, so as you saw in the ad, they had two versions of this cereal. This regular one with the creepy boy on the cover, and then they had the brown sugar cinnamon one with the creepy girl on the cover. Now this brown sugar cinnamon one is empty, so we can't see what the cereal looked like, but here on the side of the box, you can see this kind was frosted with a coating of brown sugar cinnamon. And again, they show the actual size of the cereal. Now in a way, this cereal was just kind of a knockoff of frosted mini wheats, which Kellogg's released 20 years prior. But I guess they thought the idea of graham flavoring would win people over. Little did they realize that in the late 80s, brand cereals were all the rage, not graham. So Kellogg's was barking up the wrong tree. And of course, these lame, sappy commercials didn't help. Emily had a smile that embraced you like the summer sun. I remember sitting on Aunt Sarah's porch, sharing graham crackers and milk and a thousand little girl stories. Now Kellogg's has found a way to capture the wholesome good taste of graham crackers. New SW Graham, the genuine graham cereal shredded into biscuits. Kellogg's SW Graham, original in cinnamon. It takes you back to the goodness of Graham. You never forget the good- Now eventually they graduated from that terrible ad campaign to one that was at least a little more fun. They decided to bring these creepy kids on the boxes to life. Here, check it out. Hey Becky, what's the SW stand for in SW Graham? That's easy. It's so wholesome because it's made with Graham. One of the original health foods. Stanley Willis, the outfielder for the Blazers. Why would Kellogg's name a cereal after a ball player? Simply wonderful, because it's shredded into biscuits. Maybe it stands for so what, as long as it tastes good. How does he do that? Kellogg's S.W. Graham, the family cereal that's wholesome, and then some. Now, a couple things about that commercial. One, the two kids in that ad obviously weren't the same two kids that are on the front of these boxes, which begs the question, who or where are these actual creepy box kids? Or are they even real? 
Maybe they were just drawings, but you would think they were at least based on real people, no? Two, why did this kid make up a fake baseball player and a fake baseball team? There's no Stanley Willis or a Blazers professional or minor league baseball team. I guess Kellogg's didn't want to pay whatever they had to pay to use a real athlete's name. Cause back in 1989, when these were released, I would have gone with Spud Webb. But ultimately the whole, what does SW stand for ad campaign was kind of underwhelming because it turns out it stood for Sylvester W. Graham, just the inventor's initials, lame. But at least we have a full box of this stuff so we can open it up and take a look. So here's what a bowl of SW Graham looked like. And even though it's 30 years old, it actually looked pretty much the same as this when it came out back in 1989. The pieces aren't really shriveled or discolored, which is actually pretty surprising because supposedly Graham flour goes rancid quicker than other flour. Because it uses the whole grain, the bran and the germ, it's more prone to spoiling. But as you know, they pack cereals full of preservatives, so I'm sure this stuff wouldn't have spoiled quickly. Not like it really mattered because this stuff didn't stay on shelves very long. I don't remember exactly how long it lasted, but I think it was less than a year. I barely remember this cereal from my childhood. I definitely tried the brown sugar cinnamon one when I was younger. I don't think we ever got a box of this regular version. But of course, this wasn't the first Graham cereal, and it wouldn't be the last either. There was, of course, Graham Crackos, which I did a video about, and then there's Golden Grahams, an underrated classic, and there are many other varieties as well, including Honey Graham O's. There was a Cinegram Honeycomb, a Honey Graham Life, which I really liked. There was a Honey Graham Chex flavor, and of course, one of my favorite varieties of Chex, good old Graham Chex. This stuff was so good. Delicious sweetened Chex pieces with little Graham crackers in the mix as well. I really wish they'd reboot this one. I'm still actually trying to find an empty box of this one for my collection. So if anyone out there has this box, please let me know. All right, well that's gonna do it for SW Graham cereal. I'm sure this was a video that literally nobody was asking for, but as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, stay crunchy. Graham? Graham? I don't know.